Okay then, well today our project is going to be putting front brake pads on this little 2000 Mazda Protégé. This should apply to uh, 99 through 2003 Protégé and probably even the older models. Pretty similar. So uh, we did the back brakes a week or two ago. And so now uh, getting scrubbing noise coming from the front. So uh, we're going to have to go ahead and change those out. So let's get started. Already taking the hood cap off, pulled it off, put it over here. We break our load now. <coughs> In this case, I'm using a 21 millimeter socket with a breaker bar. Okay, now we're going to jack it up. Now you want to make sure that you jack up under the proper position. Uh, generally on these front wheel drive cars, you have a spot where the subframe uh, bolts to the rest of the car. It's a big bolt or whatever. So that's usually a good reinforced spot to use on. That's what I just don't jack it up on the proper panel or anything like that. Just bend it. I want to point something out. This car has a couple issues going on up here. This is one right here. This is uh, the front wheel. Looks like any other normal front wheel. But uh, what's happened here with this car? Someone has swapped out the original wheels and tires for these. And these are not the original wheels because they're 15s. These are uh, the tire that's on it's a 195-65 R15. And so, what happens is when you do that, this is supposed to have 14s with a 185-65 14 tire on it. And what happens is it throws your speedometer off. The tire is taller, so it, it throws your speedometer off and also uh, kind of throws your gear ratio off a little bit. So your speedometer in this event reads slow and you know kind of a small engine you kind of need all the gearing help you can get so that's that but the other two issues were for one these tires are old they've got cracks going on around the side walls which is not really good it's not terrible but it's not great now here's the biggie you see right here in the center you may notice that the that metal part here that's the hub Okay, well you notice how the wheel, the what you call the register, I guess, in there is not touching that. It's because it's several millimeters 
too large, the wheel is. So that's a big no-no because even though it fits, you know it fits the lug pattern correctly, which is a four uh, by 100 millimeter on this one. Uh, when this happens, when it's not, this is the wheel is supposed to be held, you know, that's a support for the wheel. When you don't have that, that means that all the forces are being transmitted solely to the to the wheel lugs, the studs there, and that's a no-no. So that's unsafe. So we've got to get these wheels changed out. I've got, I've got uh, four replacement wheels. I went to the junkyard yesterday, so let's go ahead and get this one off. Let's see what we got going on under there. Somebody's gonna say, Oh, you should use a four way lug wrench. Remember, they got all over me because I used a four way lug wrench. Again, we Okay then, so this is just a simple disc brake front end and I can see <laughs> it's definitely, you can see the rotor is kind of pretty rough right here and ideally you would replace that, it's got kind of some grooves and stuff in it, the back side's okay, but this side's kind of, you either replace it or, or uh, you'll have it cut. But normally I just replace the whole rotor because it's a slip-on piece, you know. <clears throat> but uh, I don't think I'm going to do that because uh, this is just a beater car. It's nothing expensive. And, you know, I don't consider that a safety hazard. You know, if you've got cracks in here, yeah, you need to replace it. Or if it's worn down to paper thin. Yeah, you need to replace it, but this just started doing this, it's, it's, it's a little rough, but I'm not going to deal with it right now, I'm just going to put pads on it, so, and you can see, got some uh, good metal shavings there, so, and there's a couple other things going on, too, <clears throat> somebody's broken the retainer for the brake line, so I've got it wire tied on here with a zip, with a zip tie on there, zip tied on, and, <clears throat> tie rod feels good here's a subject of a lot of noise complaints on these cars the sway bar end links we're in that we're going to do a separate video on that hoping it doesn't rain on us but you can see that one ain't looking too good but on to the brakes so the brakes these are usually very simple to do looks <clears throat> like this one's no exception you can have a pair of bolts to hold this copper on and looking at the back side you've got one here and you've got one up here looks like they're probably 13s 12 or 13s I'm guessing 13s make sure you don't mess up and undo the brake line that's this one right here see, it's got a well you can see that because my camera's not pointing there but here's the brake line don't take that one loose it has nothing to do with it so that's them. So, me uh, bolts loosen there, and come back to that just in a second. 
Hey R. Peak, you kill us with all the snow videos, pal. Don't worry, he won't ever hear that. He doesn't watch my channel. So. Okay, that's wrong. 14 looks like there's gonna be the magic number here. Yep, it is. Top one was easy to get loose, and this one's tight. Look at that one. Out. <clears throat> you always want to check and make sure that your calipers slide okay. Sometimes I got pins. Normally, they always got pins in here. And this one seems kind of stiff. This bolt does. That's what they're supposed to slide on, so. Like it's not turning too easy. Good boy, I hope that's coming out. Looks like it is. Let's go ahead and do this one now. Always have to act up on you, don't they? Something always has to. Be a test to see if we can succeed, I guess. Yeah, that's what I thought. <coughs> this uh, slider pan was kind of seized up. Out. There you go. Okay. What I did was I took this, I took a 17 millimeter wrench, and there's a this slider pin. You see, hopefully you can see. I'm kind of sliding it back and forth. It's right here. You're supposed to move. That's how your caliper, your caliper kind of floats in there to make sure that the pads are riding evenly. So anyway, I put a 17 on this and kind of got this work loose. This one up here was okay, so should be ready to go ahead and pull this cowper insert out. All right, there's your cowper. What I normally do is I don't like to let this thing hang by the brake line, so I take a bungee cord and just run up to some convenient location like the spring strut and we'll kind of let that hang there uh, by itself. Pull that more over Oops, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. Alright. Okay. So 
to what we got here. Turn the lid over. Okay, that was that's your caliper. That's your caliper piston in there. That's what applies the brakes. So like I said, we don't take anything loose with the hydraulics up here. So this is just a part here that holds the pads in. Here's the front outer pad. It just slides right out. Now this is a kind of an anti-rattle spring that's on the outside of it right here. So keep that. That thing there that I've got pulled out. So what I do is to keep from getting confused about which pad goes where, I always try to do something like this. I put this pad out here and then I take the back one. <clears throat> Look at that. Good grief. I've never seen that happen before. What in the world? Ever seen that before? Huh. Well, I don't know what happened there. Maybe they're trying to Maybe that thing they're trying to take them out before and they uh trying to pry the brake pad out. You ain't supposed to do that, that's for sure. <laughs> but those things that's that's a sign I mean, <clears throat> excuse me. It's that time of year again. It's always that time of year. But um these pins right here, let me talk about this again. These are simply called slider pins and these things are in theory, like I said, they're supposed to slide in and out of this caliper frame like this. This is this. See, it's got some grease on the end of it. In theory, it's supposed to slide in and out very easily because uh, if they get stuck, which these appear to be stuck, then the pads don't float anymore on the rotor. They work, they don't stick, but they don't, you know, as the rotor moves a little bit of run out, the pads don't kind of just ride on it back and forth. They're just stuck in one place. So. Uh, what happens, it looks like what happened with this one, <clears throat> look at that, it burned that pad down to nothing on this side, on the outside, so uh, that's a sign that all the, <clears throat> all the braking force was being taken by this outside pad, and that's not right, so I'm going to clean up these, you know, especially you guys up north, you tend to run into this also, so, so it's a good idea to go ahead and take these pins out and uh, be careful of the boot right here. Try not to tear that up, but get them freed up and out and clean them up and re-grease them so they're sliding. And that's really about all there is to a brake job on one of these cars. This is pretty simple. You're just gonna go ahead and say keep your pads, your old ones oriented. Make sure that you put this anti-rattle spring back on the new pads and just put your new pads on the same exact way that they came out. And I would say just use your best judgment about the uh, the rotor, like I said, this one's pretty thick. It's got a lot of meat left on it, so it's not vibrating. <clears throat> so right now, I'm just kind of gonna go. Uh, well, I say go cheap. I'm just gonna let to not do the rotors right now. Maybe next time around, I'll do them if I still have this car. So, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask me on this. This is, like I said, this is a real easy job. So just make sure you get those pins. Make sure your slider pins are actually sliding. <laughs> and go from there. Let's put it back and do the other side the same exact way. So you hear that and I've, I have almost made videos about that. That guy goes by in that truck. I don't know who he is but he does the same stupid thing every time. He goes by here and he slows down for a speed bump and then he's like he's pumping the gas going by like for my benefit or something like whoa, 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 whoa. what the hell am I supposed to do? You want me to get out there and celebrate when you do that? You're a stupid idiot for doing that. Grow up, man. If you had a pro mod car out here, I'd be impressed, but not no stupid stock Ford truck. Get a life. See you guys. Have a good one. Through the magic of video editing, I'm now over on the passenger side working on these brakes. Even though just a second ago I was over on the left. How about that? But anyway, ran into the same thing over here on this one. You got one pad that's plenty of meat on it. But you see how it's wearing unevenly? And then this one, this was the rear one on this side, did it? Look at that. It's down to the nub there too. So sure enough, I had one self-adjusted what slider pin, excuse me, slider pin that was free and moving. And then one up here, sure enough, that was froze up. So
Boy, it is, dude. So, we'll have to work on that. These have to be moving. Can't stress that enough. So, anyway, that's uh, that was, that's what causes that. So, anytime you do a disc brake job, make sure your pins or any other type of sliding surface is doing its job. Otherwise, your brake pads will wear unevenly and cause you lots of problems. Well, I thought I had better uh, expand a little bit on what I meant about these slider pins, cleaning them up. You need to clean them up and grease them. So I took a little wire brush and cleaned this one up. The other one was actually in pretty good shape. It was uh, just need some grease on it, so it's working good. So I cleaned this one up with a wire brush and re-greased it. I just used some good chassis grease. And I'm just going to reinsert it back where it goes. And just kind of work it around some and then you get that little bit of extra grease off there you don't want that on the brake pads so anyway it should slide very easily which it now does this one of course it works good so it's okay some disc brake maintenance 101 here hope it's video has been a benefit to you guys thanks so much for watching have a good one okay i'm gonna set you back down here and uh, we got a couple little things i want to show you and i had to issue a correction too here i'll show you that in just a second Get back in position there i hope you're in the frame <laughs> okay the first correction i need to issue you is I was showing you about this thing, this pad thing, this separator on the back, I call it an anti-rattle spring. Well, forget that. The new one's already come with that. So I made already on it. So don't worry about that. Number two is the pads are exactly the same front to back on these, so don't worry about getting them mixed up either. So that's too good for <clears throat> Now, here's something you need to know how to deal with. You see you got the caliper right here, the caliper piston. Well, what happens is when your brake pads run way down like these did, then the caliper piston gets it extended out further than it should be. Well, I won't say further than it should be, but it gets extended out into a pretty far position. And so, try to keep you in the frame. What you have to do is, when you put your pads back in, you have to compress this piston back in. Otherwise, you can't get the pads in. You can get them in, you can't get them over. Well, you, won't, you won't get them in. That's all there is to it, so you have to compress this thing. So what you do is, sometimes you can do them by hand, but most of the time I've found you can't. So <clears throat> I just get my C-clamp out and carefully get it in position here and just draw it in push it back in real easy I'm thinking this is probably why my brakes were feeling kind of weird I thought it was the back ones but now that I see how worn down these were in the front and the fact that they weren't sliding anymore that's probably Okay, I hope that made some sense here, guys. You see what I did? I just compressed this thing back in, and usually I just go far enough that it's kind of level with the little boot that's around it. I try not to ram it all the way back in. Uh, that should suffice. So if you come try to put this all together and it still won't go in, then uh, you can come back and do some more on this. But that's how you do it. And once you take the pressure off of it, it shouldn't uh, try to come back out. Just make sure nobody steps on the brakes while you're doing this. If you have a stuck caliper, stuck caliper piston, for whatever reason, then <clears throat> you need to replace it. It won't ever work right. Okay, so all we got to do now is uh, put the pads back in and reassemble it. I did go in and lube up, cleaned and lubed these slider pins to make sure they're sliding up here and down here. So they seem to be good to go so it's a good thing 
like it. So that's how you do the brake pads on one of these, and I'll show ahead and show you putting the pads back in. So we'll do that. We should be. <clears throat> Has anybody been counting how many times I've cleared my throat so far? I'm gonna have to move, man. I can't deal with this weather anymore. Can't. This weather sucks down here. One week it's in the 20s, next week it's in the 60s, one day it rains, one day it doesn't rain, one day it snows, one day it doesn't snow. I'm tired of it. It just blows down here. Now if these things just go right, right in here, uh, I mean, they're shaped, they got little pegs on it right here, so don't, don't put them like that. <laughs> just slip them in. Where do they go? Well, they got a lot of meat on them, so now you can. Uh, <clears throat> that thing about me. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, you just take the scalper back loose from your support and see if you can get it to go back on here. There we go. <clears throat> All right, back on. You guys see any of this? I hope you can. Start the bolt back in. There you go. Now, it kind of becomes obvious why there's a, when I showed you earlier in this video, there's a thing you can put a 17 on right here. Well, now it's obvious because when you tighten these bolts up, they thread into this thing. So, that's, that's the whole deal of that. It's called learning as you go. All right, just hold the 17 on that one, hold the slider pin still. Try not to bang your hand on anything. And then tighten your caliper hanging screws back up. They sound like I'm kind of slurring my words a little bit. I bit my tongue the other day. It hurts real bad. So, some words where my tongue goes to that part of my, hits my teeth or whatever. I'm in agony. <laughs> May not make it. <laughs> Yeah, I was telling somebody, I think it was a ghetto wagon, he was, uh, I guess he was highly impressed with my old video introduction I did, and I was kind of telling him I'm going to make an effort to make some better videos, meaning complete, more descriptive, like a little blurb at the beginning of them, a bit more professional because I'm bad as anybody and probably worse about doing these videos where I'd say, well, this is what I did, and this is what I did, and this is what I did. Well, that doesn't help people. People like to see, oh, here he comes. Here comes the dog out here. He found me. I think it's a girl. Anyway, videos where people see actually doing the work, I think, is a whole lot better. So I'll try my very best to do that from here on. Okay, so that's it for this. I'm going to uh, get on with a couple other things. I'm going to have to replace these sway bar end links, so i got to put that camera on the charger a little bit. And uh, I'll do a little video about the sway bar end links in a minute. So thanks for watching again, guys, like I've told you a couple of times already. And if you have any questions, you can always feel free to ask. See you around.